Hitting revenue targets is hard and requires constant hustle. Last quarter's success is already forgotten. Learn the mindset and tactics of today's most successful revenue producers in B2B marketing and sales. We call this the revenue hustle. I'm your host, Tom Hessen, navigating you on this journey. Today's show is sponsored by Nine Lenses, an interactive assessment platform that enables you to add instant value to your buyers and allows your sales team to tailor business conversations focused on the pain points each and every time. Check them out at NineLenses.com. All right, we're here for another episode of The Revenue Hustle. I am your host, Tom Hessen, and today I have the distinct pleasure to welcome FX Riodu to the podcast. FX, welcome to The Revenue Hustle. Hi, Tom. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I'm really excited. So FX, you are the Chief Marketing Officer of Capgemini Invent in North America. That sounds like a big job. Um, why don't you give us a little intro about yourself? Yeah, well, so my name is FX. Uh, the reason why I go by FX is because it stands for Francois Xavier, which sometimes is a little bit difficult to say for some of my American friends. So uh, here it is. That's my internal branding. Um, I am a Capgemini baby, started my career here in North America about uh, 11 years ago, uh, working wow. on social media and digital and uh, and work my work my way up the ladder in some ways uh, over the last uh, eight years I was I was based in Hong Kong in Asia Pacific where I, I built the marketing and communication department of the company for for the region and about uh, about nearly uh, one and a half years ago now I moved here to back to the US uh, where I have the pleasure to to lead um, a great team of, of of creative across across uh, you know, uh, the uh, experience agency, innovation agency of, of Capgemini, which, um, which is branded as Capgemini Invent, uh, and across uh, a, a few other cool brands, uh, such as Frog, uh, which uh, is very recognized and very known on the market, and, uh, and Synapse, which is a, a, a design a company focused on uh, complex engineering solutions. Fantastic. Well, I'm very thankful you decided to come on here and share some of your uh, insights with us. So you know how we do this. We do revenue rules on the revenue hustle. So why don't you uh, go ahead and share your first revenue rule? Yeah, so I think one thing that is pretty important in, uh, in, 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 in our job as marketers is really, uh, and that would be my first revenue rule, which is really the importance of storytelling. Uh, so I define uh, storytelling in my job in, uh, in, in, in two ways. Uh, and I think maybe we can deep dive in them later, but, uh, the first way that, that I define storytelling is really that we are the guarantor of, um, uh, the, the, the soul of the, uh, the organization that we work for. So that's almost kind of, almost like an introspection, uh, uh, part of it, which is like, what do we stand for? Who are you? Who are, who are we? Uh, how do we define ourselves in the market, and how do we sell sell the story uh, coherently and you know and end to end? And that's a very important uh, uh, thing for a company like Capgemini, uh, uh, which uh, which uh, which uh, identity and culture is very strong, and, and and which is you know represented every day by 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 our, our, our consultants, and which at the end of the day is how our consultants and our people is how the the. Uh, the markets and our clients see us, right? Because they interact with them every day. And then the second part of what what's important for me in storytelling is when we market ourselves and when we talk about our services and uh, uh, the, the the offers that we are trying to push to the market. I think it's more important to uh, to 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 tell it from the story of our clients and how they kind of transform and how they change. Um, and I think telling those uh, those stories uh, is for me what's what's really really important because I I see you know. I have the pleasure for working working for a company that that's doing pretty cool stuff uh, uh, with some of the nicest brand around the world. Uh, every day, you know, when I when I when I use products, when I interact, and I, I I'm a consumer and I have experiences in a in a store or, or you know when I travel and things like this. You know, there's always a little bit of Capgemini everywhere. So I think this is really cool to be able to, you know, tell that story from the end right. of that we deliver than than from ourselves. Well, it's interesting about like your, you know, the two points of storytelling. One is kind of the internal having yeah. to define the soul. And then the other one is, to, you know, t st telling stories to your customers because that's how they want to receive, you know, um, they want to see themselves. They want to hear and, and solve yeah. their problems. They don't, you know, they don't care about us and how long we've been around and all sorts of stuff, right? 
Um, so how did you come to the conclusion? I mean, I guess in a big organization, you have internal marketing and yeah. you kind of have external marketing. And so I'm just kind of curious, um, you know, did you, have you always been kind of trained that way as a marketer, kind of the internal versus external, you know, obviously yeah. as a CMO, you've kind of got both hats there, but um, kind think, of how did think, you think about that? Yeah, I think, you know, we are people business, right? So we are 370,000 people strong around the world, uh, Capgemini Invent ourselves, we have about 10,000 people across the world, you know, very brilliant people, very smart. Uh, and um, it came to, to, to our understanding very, very, very fast that actually that uh, our brand and the way that we, the experience that we were giving to our customers was our people. So there is no such differentiation mm -hmm. as internal and external at Capgemini because when you do marketing, right? Because the way that your brand uh, messaging is being shared is only through the consultant that are there with the clients, right? So uh, the, the way that your brand is experienced is only in the delivery of the project that you delivered for the client. So that's that's what it is to be, uh, uh, you know, professional services B two B B two B business. So you know everything that uh, if you look at the tagline of Capgemini, which is you know kind of get the future you want, that's something that is both internal and external, right? So a good example of it. Uh, we talk to the people who want to work with us and want to build their career and grow at Capgemini and tell them, you know, come here and get the future you want. You will be able to grow, you'll be able to train, you will be able to work with some of the nicest organizations around the world, define what's next. Uh, and then you 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 go to the clients and you tell them we're going to challenge you, we're going to help you, you know, kind of uh, uh, assess and transform your business to better adapt to disruption. We're going to help you kind of uh, find new business models. So I think, you know, both are, are, are intrinsically uh, linked, right? Uh, employee advocacy, yeah, uh, yeah. the way the people are the brand of the ambassadors of our brand uh, really make internal to external and external to internal pretty, pretty obvious in our case. Yeah, no, that's a great point because your people are, ex your internal people are external, right? I yeah. mean, that's the beauty of, of um, a global consulting business. So I suspect, tell me if, if this is right, like is, the internal marketing part, do you have a lot of input, right, on those messages, right, versus maybe the external storytelling, you probably have a little more creative control, let's say, on the stories you tell, how you tell them, whereas internal, you may have a lot of other leaders um, that have a perspective, and, and they're maybe more difficult to tell the story internally versus externally. Yeah, I mean, it became, I mean, it's, um, we, we, we're very the way that we try to to, to define uh, Capgemini Invent and what it stands for the market is really uh, uh, on, uh, on 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 four different pillars, and I think those four di different pillars have been almost like you know kind of of, of a, you know an exercise of kind of interviewing the market, seeing what's out there as the opportunities, and also exactly as you said, kind of checking which are what are the capabilities, what is the full leadership, and what is the uh, what are the, uh, uh, the key stakeholders that, that that can input on, on you know what 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 do we want to be famous for? And I think those four pillars are, you know, in the area of um, uh, product innovation. So basically, we are the only one there that is able to uh, uh, bring uh, innovation at every stage of the of the product life cycle. The ability to operationalize digital transformation, which I think is still a very huge market opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. Um, the smart use of data. So basically from visualization to be able to uh, extract the uh, data strategy, extract large, large data set and, and do smart decision based on that. And the last one being um, uh, the ability to uh, to define new business models. So very kind of the, the, the strategy consulting and then what's next for your business uh, in, in, in this market. So uh, if you think about you know, uh, how do you tell a story uh, within Capgemini? I think that's that's the that's that that, that is our framework essentially. What we want to be famous at Capgemini Invent, and the idea, um, the role that Capgemini Invent has for the rest of Capgemini is we like to we we like to call it the the tip of the spear. So basically, kind of introducing those four topics and kind of having the strategic conversation, defining the roadmap with the clients, or then the other large, uh, you know. Uh, 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 capabilities and services of Capgemini to be able to define, to then deliver at scale what it means from the the the, 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 the IT, the development, the engineering, and the, and and the, and the transformation at scale of those of, of those strategies. I got you. Now, has has storytelling always been an interest of yours? So, I mean, there's a lot written about storytelling. I've, I've I've read a few good books about storytelling. I love kind of telling stories myself. I think it's just a very effective yeah. form of kind of communication just people have been wired to tell stories and and um, there's frameworks out there like story yeah. brand 
right? There's, there's a person who has a problem who meets a guide, right? So like, I'm just, you know, tell me a little bit about your background with storytelling and, and, and why, yeah. why that's important. So I think I think it's very important for for a few reasons. The first one is you know there is there is overwhelming information out there. So there is like you know if you're a customer you're constantly bombarded with with ad and information and uh, and and you know kind of things that are asking you to to buy. If you're you know a citizen you're bombarded with information etc. Sometimes you distrust this information. And I think one of the things that we can uh, that we can learn from this is today it's very difficult for brands to talk to people. Uh, it's better for people listen to people you know they don't listen to brands anymore so uh and that's what that's what storytelling uh uh, uh does for us because if you're talking about something that is extremely you know uh tangible such as uh you know uh, uh you, you, i mean people may go on our website and check you know the the the, the, the tombot robot that has been built uh together with vcs in seattle and that robot is essentially you know uh, a companion a, a, a mechanical companion animal that helps um, uh, you know people with dementia age gracefully and it, it allows them to to, to 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 limit their time in hospitals and things like that uh, that's very tangible you know that's the use of technology the use of innovation to improve the human lives and you know that's very easy to explain and very easy to pitch and then I think you uh, it's it, it, it's clear it, it, it makes innovation very clear and very tangible and then all sales people who are people themselves can tell those story very simply all people you know who are not necessarily working on this project can go to their friends to their right, family right, right. Uh, to their their, 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 their former uh, classmates etc and tell that story and that's how we expand our brand presence and we expand expand what we uh, uh, what we stand for you know, uh, complex engineering solution in itself doesn't sound really, really sexy, right? So then, when you when 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 you really show what it can do for for humans uh, and make it in simple words that everybody can relate to, yeah. then the story is being is being told in a way that makes sense and that reinforces the brand at the end of the day. Yeah, because I mean, in an organization of your size, right, and just the, the in the in the marketplace being so busy, right, it's hard to get messages to move right or or to be heard and so if you think about like since the dawn of time stories have been told over and over and over again so we have stories you know that have yeah. been passed down uh either family stories or just you know country stories or whatever it may be um they've just been passed down from generation to generation so what you're really saying is just you're using that art form of story to just kind of proliferate internally because yeah everyone can just tell a short quick story right that um is, is humanized that's easy to tell it's easy to receive um and, and that can get through some of that mass complexity of a large organization right um and in an even more complex market yeah and i think i think you know people now you know when they when when they want to work somewhere, when they want to, uh, you know, uh, hire a vendor, uh, they care more and more around, uh, you know, what is the what is the end value of what I'm doing? What is the the, the purpose of this organization I'm joining? What is the uh, do I do, do do I match in my mindset? You know, the, this this company that I'm going to be working for and with. Um, and um, I think you know, kind of having. The storytelling very acts, uh, act, 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 sorry, exist around the the um, uh, uh, you know kind of this end value delivered uh, for the society for the clients um, is uh, is very a good way to, uh, to 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 make sure that you you resonate to 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 this expectation and to of of of, of people you know that's I mean I think I I think that's the best way to to interact with our audience you know I have. Just in mind at the moment, uh, the, the the story that we published around, you know, the the way that we use data and AI to to check biodiversity in the Mojave Desert, you know, in the US, and uh, and uh, how we are kind of tracking, you know, the evolution of the of the desert and the biodiversity there, and how it's helped the planet, you know, and so this 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 very tangible type of story, which is, you know, like, yes, technology can be frightening, yes, technology is difficult to understand, the value of technology can be challenged. But then you know you also have all of those things that are that are positive, tangible, efficient, uh, relatable for people, and I think that's a way that we 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 take something that is difficult to explain, which is a B two B brand, you know, and um, and and uh, and that is that is a giant organiz multinational organization, right, 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 make it something that is very simple to understand and that you want to interact and work want to work with. Now, is this something that you coach your team on? Is this just something that's embedded into the way you guys work? <laughs> 
I think I, I think it is. I, 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 you know, I'm looking. If I'm thinking about my team right now, I think they are a lot more creative than I am. So I think they probably coach me better than I than I than I coach them. Uh, if I'm very frank with you, they are usually the one kind of coming up with the cool ideas, and I. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's uh, that's the way that it works usually. No, that's great. And so you probably are. Um, then communicating these stories externally, right? So how what how are some of the or what are some of the mediums or or paths to market that you can bring these other than your people, right? So that's probably your number one path to market is to tell these stories internally and they get carried to your clients. What are some other ways that these stories are told? Yeah, I mean, I think we have we have uh, you know realistically uh, Probably, probably our marketing mix is made of about about sixty percent uh, digital channels. So everything that is around uh, social media uh, as a B two B organization, LinkedIn is you know uh, some channel that is very obvious to us. Um, we we try to 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 expand uh, into uh, into more uh, intent and account based uh, you know kind of um, kind of. Um, uh, uh, access to our clients to make sure that that that, that we that, that that we that we serve them with content that they want to see. Uh, we uh, so that's that I think a big piece of our channel. Um, we still have. Uh, I think it's very important to be um, you know uh, bringing insights and research um, and expertise uh, to, uh, to 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 the debate. So we we do have. Um, a few partnerships with uh, with large universities and with uh, and, and and you know we push very much uh, our content and our stories in the in the press as well and try to have some of our of our, of our spoke people and and key experts you know uh, contribute as much as they can as they as they, are, they are, can under allow them to uh, to to be part of the conversation essentially because at the end of the day you know we we want to project expertise we want to show that we that we are competent and those are the people that are the, that are the best to put uh, to, to 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 put in the press um, and um, and um, and I think we're very we're still what I like I mean we, we what we have. Um, very strong vision around, you know, key industry events uh, and what we call moments that matter. So we, you know, we try to to focus around, you know, where our clients are going to be uh, to make big impacts uh, from brand perspective. So recent, most recently, we were at South by Southwest, for instance, you know, where uh, it's a, it's an innovation and marketing mecca. Uh, right. So a place where all of our buyers, you know, in the area of customer transformation. In the area of everything that's related to design, uh, are so we uh, we had a big sponsorship which made us the you know the the, the design partner of, uh, of of South by Southwest and we, we we created an entire program around that that to to interact with uh, with uh, the audience there but also to kind of fly in fly in our, our clients and interact with our existing clients there to to enrich some of the, some of the relationship that we have so you know having you know maybe maybe those three level of external marketing, which are, you know, really digital, really engaging through the digital channel, uh, uh, press and research, uh, and then key moments uh, for brand for brand acceleration, I put it this way, uh, are really kind of our, 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 from, from, from kind of the uh, ac ac lead acquisition and, and, and customer acquisition strategy and retention, that's probably the, the kind of the three main channels that we Got have. it. Okay, now that's great. Okay, because I know marketing a big B2B uh, consulting organization has its own um, set of challenges, which we won't have time to get into, right? Just, um, you know, trying to reach the very senior executives that uh, you guys sell to and, and, and work with. Um, it's different than, you know, someone out there searching for some software for yeah. a, a particular problem, right? Uh, you guys solve big problems. So, all right, well, let's, let's roll into the second revenue rule. Um, it kind of you started to touch on a little bit, but why don't you give us the uh, the second revenue rule FX? Yeah, I think I mean I think there was an easy segue from it from uh, from the previous conversation, but uh, I think one one of the revenue rules that that for me is the most important one is uh, always uh, put your customer first. So um, it means. Uh, um, I mean, we go a little bit less into into hunting and a bit more into farming in some ways, you know, from a sales strategy. So um, I have. Uh, you know, we have this idea that you know uh, probably 
um, uh, in, a, in a recession or in a slowing economy, you know, uh, such as the one that, uh, that uh, 2023 is, uh, seems to be shaping as, uh, you know, there is, a, there is an in, the, 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 your, in, your natural inbound uh, from a marketing perspective and, you know, opportunities coming in uh, may, may reduce. So that's the moment that you need to kind of make sure that you have a very strong relationship with your customers and you need to enrich your relationship with your customers. So uh, this year particularly, but uh, I think that's, uh, that's always a rule that, uh, that, that, needs to, that needs to be at the center of everything we do. Yeah, and and I think yeah, without our customers, we're we're nothing, right? At the end of the exactly. day, um, and and so I mean, I think it's you know we see this discussion around customers and their significance, right? In in a down economy, just because it's we all know it's easier to keep and grow an existing customer than it is to find a new one, right? Just the costs. Um, I was just reading today about just um, in in kind of the SaaS world that you know, new customer acquisition is way down, right? Just compared to what it's been in the past. And and so um, top sales performers are still performing well, but there's a lot of medi medium and, and kind of poor performing that aren't selling anything. And it's just harder and harder. They were saying kind of like the order takers, you know, people would just pick up the phone and someone would be on the other line saying, hey, I'd want, I want to buy your software today, right? That's the, those sorts of transactions aren't happening. Yeah. Um, in, in an economy like this. So you've got to really focus in on your existing customers. Like how are you guys uh, executing on this customer first mentality? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think for us, that's, that's the entire realm of, um, uh, you know, um, account intimacy building one and uh, account based marketing two. So the uh, account intimacy, it's how to become closer to the relationship that you have on the, on the customer. If you look at Capgemini, you know, and the, 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 the company that I, that I mentioned several times already is, 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 a, is, a, is, a, is a very large company. You know, um, you have, you have you, basically you're trying to sell to different uh, stakeholders in the organization, right? You, you may sell to large um, IT transformation project to the CIOs, the, 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 the CTOs, and, and Capgemini Invent, you know, when ourselves we're trying to sell some strategy and the transformation uh, 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 projects, we may want to extend that, that, that reach to, uh, to CMOs, uh, to other stakeholders in the organization, right? Street, chief strategy officer, chief product officer on the engineering plant, et cetera. Uh, so uh, there is an entire kind of, uh, how do you progress, you know, in terms of footprint within the account? Sure, you can go on the market and acquire, you know, uh, uh, leads, et cetera, and connect with new CMOs, et cetera. But the reality is it's better to extend the relationship that you already have, right? So some of the, 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 the channels of the, and the tactics are related to a set of, you know, uh, accounts that we have decided are, are strategic for us, of course, and some of the way that we have our, our, our marketing budget and the, the 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 tactics and the channels that I mentioned already before will be used to kind of kind of deepen our relationship within uh, within these accounts. But I think the best way uh, for a firm like Capgemini Invent um, and uh, and an agency like Frog to uh, to 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 retain their customers is really to kind of uh, show them content, show them a, a story. We, Going back to the the thing that is that is that is challenging to them, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm thinking about you know at the moment a campaign that we are running with um uh, with a very uh, large uh, leisure and hospitality group that runs uh, 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 some parks uh, around the world and um, and you know we've built a POV around the, the future of travel, which is a research piece. So what we've done as a marketing team, and that's very very tactical, but I think that's a good example of that. Is that we have we have you know kind of uh, extracted from that future of travel what is relevant for them, and and kind of uh, created another piece or another kind of vision of you know the way that their uh, own uh, um, uh, hospitality may, may may change and the new different types of, of experience that they may that they may they may bring to their customers etc. Kind of completely kind of gave a little bit of a disrupting idea of what their future uh, business model could be and how it could be how it could be disrupted through some of those trends that we had identified uh, and show them a little bit the vision so constantly challenging with your content and your and your thoughts the the, the the your customers allow you to not be a vendor but really be a strategic partner of the of, of the right. customer and that's really the relationship that we want to establish with them right so 
the sales team, you know, the 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 the, the, the stake of the map, the uh, they ensure that you know we push the right solution and the right capability. Then understand the, the strategy of the organization, the marketing team. You know we need to uh, come up with the content, the story, the the channels that are uh, allowing us to 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 kind of map that that strategy. So I think that sometimes a little bit in the trenches, you know, for 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 the different teams. But I think that that's very fascinating to me because uh, that's also at the core of. Uh, uh, of uh, how how we, we 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 transform or go to market or go to market and 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 work closer with with sales to to uh to right sell more to to grow as a company right right because a lot of like you have relationships at the firm right you know at these clients you've designated them as the the accounts that you want to target yeah. and so now you're you're essentially equipping the sales teams the the executives on the account right with these stories and content and points of view and research as you mentioned yeah. right so you're now they're the ones carrying that message in the door so to speak right with these clients to kind yeah. of engage them is that the right the, the right way in which you're yes, reaching yeah, absolutely absolutely and if the strategy if you think about the strategy of um of the um, uh of any organization at the moment and you know you what how do you become more strategic today to uh, to, to 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 the agenda of 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 um, any organization? You know, uh, everybody is going to be uh, caring about uh, how do I become more sustainable uh, and how do I keep innovating, right? And uh, sustainability and innovation are things that are very core to our value proposition, right? As a company, and illustrating and orchestrating this uh, by, by, by 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 what does it mean by sector? By stakeholders group, you know, and, and kind of executive group, etc., and then you know, to the down to the account level of you know, this is the type of content that we can put for this account or this account is really kind of equipping the sales to to, to be able to sorry the the, the the our sales colleague to be able to kind of lead those conversations and challenge our clients in their in, in their thinking. Right, because yeah, so you're arming them with you know these these challenging topics and points of view. And then they're able to translate that into a conversation that, in theory, could lead to opportunities uh, uncovered, right? And I think can... what's, yeah, exactly. And I think what's very interesting is if you look at the way that, um, you know, usually a big banks or big insurance or a big uh, a retailer, they know retail, they know banking or they know insurance way better than we do, right? So because that's their job. So they, they, they know right. their sector and the right. way that the sector is going. Uh, uh, better than 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 what the consult the, the consultancy do, and I, uh, I that, that maybe that, that may be a provocative thought for some of my sector colleagues at Capgemini, but the, 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 that's the, that's just the reality of things, right? So what 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 are they asking us to bring in as a value proposition? That's very that 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 strategic thinking element, which right, is like right. really give us an eye from 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 the perspective of you have seen some of those best practices on on in our sector, and you have a sector POV, but not only right. What is happening in those other sectors that may completely disrupt us? You know, we've seen we, and and that 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 may completely help us help us lead the way, orchestrate. You know, uh, uh, the ecosystem, the thought leadership, uh, the, the 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 vision. Um, sometimes the policies that are going to come, etc. So I understand. You know, what it, what is there that I, right. that you can do and and challenge me. So that's really how they how they conceive their relationship with us, right? So being able to input that into the marketing programs that we have and uh, and and the content that we produce is very important. One of the things that I see, um, and I'm curious your thoughts on this, is people in your seat create fantastic content, thought leadership, points of view, um, very you know challenging, right? Just forward thinking, leading um, in the marketplace. But the people on the ground that are going to walk that into a client aren't. They didn't. They didn't conduct the research. They didn't build the point of view. They didn't. Um, you know, they're not that close to it, right? So what we see a lot of times is those those sales executives or those client executives that need to walk that in. They oftentimes will feel uncomfortable um, talking about these things because they they're not experts in that particular point of view. Or you know, like you you mentioned the the future of travel, right? How do you get those people comfortable? Around these points of view, where they can they can feel comfortable and confident enough to go in and discuss it with clients, um, you know, because we oftentimes see that they're not and have to kind of bring in an expert to kind of have the conversation on their behalf because they have the relationship but they don't have the comfort around the topic. So I'm just kind of curious how you, you know, 
think about that? Yeah, I mean that's it's it's a real challenge. You know, the that that happens all the time. There is that 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 that's a possibility. There is also a lot of times where um, you know uh, you know some people may have a behavior where they don't necessarily kind of make the effort of absorbing the content before they kind of share it. So that's also that's also something that may be uh, that may be um, uh, an issue. And to some extent, also that's um, you know I think we need to uh, uh, use the content to to educate ourselves and the market, right? So if you look at the way that the Capgemini Research Institute, for instance, kind of you know promote their research and promote their, their paper. Uh, and you know they're very well ranked uh, on the list of, of of consultancy research institutes. But uh, it's uh, they have you know series of trainings uh, uh, internally and externally on how to talk about it, what are the findings, how to uh, how to use it. You know I think our CEO has a very strong focus around um, uh, upskilling uh, constantly. You know there is a very clear yeah. culture in consultancy, and I think that's that's not only us to to really authorize you know every. Every colleague to spend hours and hours every month on kind of upskilling themselves, reading reading through content, attending those those those, those trainings, etc., to basically constantly stay on top of the of, of what what is being produced and the, and the POVs. That being said, that always come down to uh, at the end of the day, you know, that kind of the competencies and the and the, and, and and the ability of 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 uh, uh, of the consultants to 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 be, be able to translate it and, and make right. it better to the to 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 the clients. It's a uh, it's very interesting for me because I don't necessarily have a consulting mind myself. You know, I'm a I'm a creative and I'm a and I'm and, and, and I'm a marketer and I'm working I'm working surrounded by by people that are very uh, that are that, that that have that 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 mind that has been kind of a learning journey. But uh, you know, it's uh, I, I I'm always very impressed by. You know that that um, the, the, the the professionalism, you know, of uh, of and, and and the seriousness and the deep commitment that that consulting, you know, uh, requires for 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 some of our, of our colleagues. You know, there's a very strong, uh, you know, their framework and processes, etc. Yeah. You know, uh, and it, it, of course, it it impacts the culture very strongly that we are we are and and sometimes frustrate me as, as a creative or as you know as a, as a marketer but you have to recognize that it's 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 a it's a job it's a uh, that 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 requires really a, an enormous commitment and an enormous uh, enormous amount of work also uh, to 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 stay on top of those the, the exactly uh, as you said stay right. on top, um basically staying relevant you know and being able to constantly bring new values to the to, to your clients to your customers and to the market so I, I'm, I'm very impressed at, at my colleagues i have to say that yeah, no, it's. I mean, I, I I've been in that job uh, years ago, and and you know, there's a lot. You're you're immersed in the customer's world, yeah. and then you've kind of got the the mothership kind of doing its thing, right? And uh, you know, back in the day, like I was sitting at my client every day, five days a week. I was there, right? Yeah. And and sometimes you don't even feel like you feel like you work for your client. You don't really yeah. feel like you work for the mothership unless it's you know the emails and the. You know, and then you got two or three other jobs, you know, you got your client job and you got two or three internal jobs. So yeah, there's a yeah. lot going on, um, which makes, again, I, again, I think as a marketer, just makes it that much harder to kind of penetrate kind of the mind share of kind of the internal audience to carry these messages forward just because it's, it's um, you know, there's just a lot, a lot happening there. Yeah. And I mean, it, it goes full circle to, you know, offering a employee value proposition, the soul of the company that is very important for people to yeah. remain attached to it. Though sometimes it may be on client side, as you said, for 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 for, for a long time and have, you know, a tenuous attachment to 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 the mothership, et cetera. So so I think I think that's that's why, you know, the the identity and the culture of the company is very important. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think uh, you know, I'm still very good friends with those folks that I worked with, you know, many years ago, we just sat in that room, you know, for years. And, and so it's amazing the bond that you can, you can build just around the company and, and, and the culture and, and that. So uh, no, but thank you for sharing that. Those are two great rules. Um, so tell us a little bit, FX, how did you get into marketing? Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that was interesting for me because I, uh, I, I got into marketing because I, uh, I had a very, in business school, I went into that direction because I, there is, a, it's going to be something a little bit weird, but there was, uh, uh, for me, marketing was very, very close to advertising. I, I really pictured it as, you know, like the agency world, the, uh, the advertising yeah, yeah. Thing, et cetera. And I was, I was, I was fond of that French book that is named 99 Frank. So that's, that used to be our currency in France. Uh, 
from an author that is named Frédéric Begbede, who, uh, who, who wrote a book around the world of uh, advertising, which was, you know, a lot of glam, et cetera, that was very cool. And I, and, I, and I thought, oh, that sounds really cool. So I did my, my internships, et cetera, and I built my career, and I ended up building my career in this, in this domain. Uh, and um, and I, stayed, I stayed engaged. I stayed engaged into marketing and communication, and I stayed engaged into Capgemini because the, the growth of the company, the way that it transformed all the time, uh, and and keep up essentially and and uh, and you know the different opportunities that they gave me you know working from HQ working in APAC in Hong Kong working here now for for a super creative agency uh, mm-hmm. that's, that's that's doing super cool stuff etc. I I have, I have built my career in this environment and I love it so I I, I stayed in. Yeah, so you've been in B two B services yeah. marketing, right? Yeah, um, yeah, time. yeah. So no, that's. Um... You know, I, again, I, I know that's a hard job. It sounds like just in our conversations, you have a, a pretty strong kind of lead generation mindset where a lot of B2B firms, you know, in consulting don't think about leads and, and it's just brand building, right? That, that could probably be a whole nother revenue rule you have there. But uh, just where did you pick that up? You know, that kind of idea of, of you know, in these, these yeah. big firms, it's not natural. There's, 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 there's few, there's, there's just one reason, to be honest. Uh, it's because I've always, though I worked for um, uh, a company that is very established, including with its brand that is very established, I worked in um, uh, in effectively challenges part of the organization, right? I worked for Capgemini in Asia Pacific at its scale from a few hundred million euros to uh, over a billion euros now of of, of revenue, uh, you know, in a very ma- in a market with many different countries and very you know different markets, etc. So we were a challenger brand essentially. So we were acquiring customers. So that was we were not in the in the world of of, of necessarily farming. You know, we were just growing. So we, we we literally we had the backup of the large organization in the back, but we were essentially a startup, right? So, <laughs> so that's 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 and and we were we were very successful. And I think it's very similar here for. Capgemini Invent and, and, and Frog, etc. In North America, you know, we are uh, over a thousand people strong. So it's uh, it's it's it, it, it's a significant sizable consultancy, but it's not it's not um, uh, where it should be. So we're really much working towards growing it and uh, and extending our footprint, and uh, and uh, we're very much in that mindset too. So I think that's that's where I acquired by 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 doing this, um, uh, I think that was uh, that's really what um, that's 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 really the formation from the different roles. Well, that's I, I mean, yeah, that's a great. I mean, that's a great connection because <laughs> um, you had to. You ha- I mean, that's the only place where you're going to get business back. You know, in in the, in Asia, there you had to go get customers, and and so that was a really strong skill set that you developed, and you're now translating here, kind of building a slightly bigger startup. But um, <laughs> yeah. well, awesome. So where can we follow you online? You can follow me on LinkedIn mostly. I think that would be the best. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's <laughs> perfect. Fantastic. Well, thank you for coming on to the Revenue Hustle. I love the two rules, storytelling. I, I love storytelling. And obviously, anytime we're talking about customers and, and obviously you took it to the transformation and, and uh, kind of the internal mechanics of how to do that, um, that was fantastic. So thanks again. Please come back and do it again. <laughs> thank you, Tom. Thank you for tuning in to the Revenue Hustle. This episode has been brought to you by Nine Lenses. Close more deals with interactive assessments. Check them out at ninelenses.com. See you next time.